farmy men and, and in the mountains, my tree stand where I hung that and stuff. Amen. But that don't mean I stopped going. God honors faithfulness. Amen. And you boys, you'll never mount to nothing. You'll never mount to a hill of beans if you don't go to church. Just get in. Get in rock solid. You boys sitting on the front row. Hallelujah. Learn how to say amen. You get a little older, you can even amen the preacher. I'm telling you, it's a blessing. Amen. Thank God for the church. Let me say number one. I do got an outline. Let me get to it. Homiletics. We learned that in Bible school. Along with hermeneutics. Amen. So I have a homiletical outline. All my points start with the same letter. How about that? Amen. And they all go together. The local church is the greatest grassroots campaign of anything that's ever happened in America. Do you realize a, pe a bunch of ragtag individuals, just nobody's nothings, with nothing going for them, can actually form a local church and even the government of the local church and all that, and even treasurers and take care of the money without any outside organization or any outside entity other than God? It is the greatest grassroots campaign there is. Yes. Amen. In the state of Alabama, we don't have a lottery. We voted down the lottery. Amen. Churches sent buses to the polls, and we voted down the lottery. We did. I did. I voted. I like a preacher talking about voting. I like the little sticker they put on it. It's got a little check. I voted. I flew one time right after uh, the election. I had my little sticker on. I was walking through the plane. I was going, I voted. I voted. I voted. Like Gilmer Pyle. Looky here. I voted. I have seen the pilot. I said, hey, pilot, looky here. <laughs> Amen. So we voted down the lottery. And they put in the national news. They said it was the greatest grassroots campaign in the history of the state of Alabama. Amen. People come out from all over. I'm telling you, that ain't the greatest grassroots campaign in the state of Alabama. You know what it is? Local churches. Amen. Amen. Our little church sets in Pell City, Alabama, off 22nd Street in DeGarris, across from the hardware store. And our little church uh, started in the storefront over in Eden, west side. And Brother Wood uh, was in the juvenile ministry, and he lived in Pell City. And you go to a chocolate campus with about 200 uh, juveniles over there. And there was no Bible believing church in Pell City. And he had two families tell him, said, Preacher, why don't you start a church here? And they started that little storefront with about 15 people. And now we sit in that little tiny hamlet town of Pell City, Alabama, snuggled on the Logan Martin Lake in the hills of Alabama. And we got about 170, 175 folks. And this morning as we speak, it's 10 minutes till 11. Uh, in the fellowship hall, they're scurrying around. Uh, junior church has started. Daniel's probably got a little something going on with the kids for Christmas time and all that. And uh, either this Sunday or next Sunday morning, they'll have their deal where they bring all them bus kids out and they do a little Christmas program. And in our church, we'll have anywhere from 40 to 60 kids that we pick up on the bus. Some of them have no shoes. Some of them come with vomit on their clothes from drunks in the house. And we pick them up in the local church. And God's blessed our little church. We build a youth camp out there on the river. And our youth camp, we got 15 acres on the river on their own little island. And through that little local church, we've spent, Brother Wood said, we've spent almost $700,000 in that youth camp and all that we got out yonder. And it's paid for today. Boom. You know how what paid for it? God's people through our youth camp, through our church. Amen. God, we support our little church there in Alabama. We support, I think it's, uh, I think it's over 60 missionaries now that our little church supports. Amen. And God has blessed. Amen. Thank God I'm part of a church. Amen. I can stand taller. I'm a church member. Amen. I'd rather, I'd rather be a church member than a member of parliament. I'd rather, hey, I'd rather be that than, amen, in the Senate. I'll tell you, some of them in the Senate, I'd reach over and choke them by the hand. We got to go to Washington, D.C. several years ago and went with a, uh, one of the uh, Capitol Police officers was at a church there I was in. And he took us down in the catacombs and everything underneath the Capitol building 
where you can go to those different buildings. All of you can go underground. And we did. We went into the. We went to the floor of the Senate. And we went in where nobody's supposed to be able to go. You're supposed to be able to be on the outside upstairs there. We got, I got to walk around. I looked at their desk. There was, <laughs> that's all this stuff's on the internet. There was Hillary's desk. I wanted to open up and go, <laughs> I didn't, but I wanted to. They showed me a dictionary was laid out. On a little pedestal. Does anybody here know the story of why that dictionary is sitting there in the house? Huh? Amen. You know why? You know why it's in there? Because when one of the debates in there, Bill Clinton did not know what the meaning of the word "may," and they were stretching all that stuff. And Democrats were, and the Republicans brought in a dictionary and set it up and read the definition of the word "may." Yeah. And they left it in there for them. <laughs> yeah. Amen. But talking about the church, let me say number one, it's where the power of God is. Yes. Amen. There's no other place on earth where you'll feel the power of God like you will in the local Amen. church. We've seen God move, folks. I'm telling you, I'm learned. I'll never be the same. How could I ever be the same? Yeah. I've seen God, the Holy Ghost, move. The power of God We've seen him so thick before he's afraid to raise your head up. Yeah. We've seen him move sometimes before you crawl to the altar. I've seen the power of God in this church right here move so thick. Man, as, I, as uh, the old preacher used to say, Oh, God, I was so thick you needed to see an eye dog just to get around. Amen. But God's moved around. Man, I remember running the aisles. I got a picture in my Bible of me standing right here. With a look about just like this. And right next to me is Micah Henson. Yeah. And at that time when he's singing, there's folks running the aisles. Yeah. Man, that's one of my favorite pictures. I said, I've got to have that. Yeah. I put that in front of my Bible. Where God's moved. Amen. Amen. We've heard God's men <laughs> take the bread of life and break it here. Yeah. Amen. Some of the choicest men of God you all have right here in this yeah. pulpit. Amen. 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 Brother Earl Hughes. I don't think Brother Earl will ever preach in the pulpit again behind the pulpit. And boy, I miss him. Yes, Amen. And some of the prince of preachers has been through here. And the power of God is in the local church. Yes. And I'm going to tell you kids something. It's the jury's out. The jury's out. I hope every one of you make it and live for God. But it usually don't work that way. I hate it. I hate it. But I know this, if you get in and dig in, I don't know even what makes a young man or young lady get that inside of That's the way I pray now for people that I know. I pray for my kids. I said, God, do for them what you did for me. Amen. Yeah. Give them a love for the church like you give me. Amen. I love them. Amen. Amen. I even love God's people. That's how I know I'm saved. <laughs> Amen. Power of God. Also the presence of God. <laughs> Amen. You ever felt him move? I'll tell you what, the presence of God will ruin you. It'll ruin you. You'll, you'll, you'll get a taste of that and you'll want it more. You know what I've learned? I've learned when the presence of God is in a place, some folks won't stay around because they don't want God. Dr. Rugby used to make this statement. He'd say, you preach the book, man. You preach the word of God. So people either get out or get out. Get in or get out, man. Oh, yeah. So I've seen them. I've seen them by the hundreds. He said, you young men come down here to school. He said, once you start getting in that book, and that book's a mirror, man. You see yourself. So you can get in or get out. He said, we'll find out. After three years here, we'll find out. We'll know. We'll know whether or not you're going to stick, man. And some of you are not in a fruit cake. Did you hear because somebody said you here? Said you're not here to learn anything about God, man. You know, boy, he'd nail us. Amen. And he'd look over, he'd be kneeling there at the little podium in the upstairs, that new building, looking down at us like that. He said, Don't tell me, man, I'll tell you. How is it being you, goofball? Hey, goofus. Said, Some of y'all don't know how to treat your family. You don't even know how to, you don't know how to walk in here and look at somebody in the eyeball, you nut. You know what this book did? You know what the local church did? It taught us how to be around folks. It taught us how to love folks. It taught me how to love my wife. Amen. 
love my kids right, love my friends. Amen. Presence of God. Then let me say this. This is where the people of God are. God's people are the best. They're the best. Amen. And why come in here this morning and the memories that I have. Amen. I got the picture of Brother Bob. I see it on your phone. Of Brother Maddox running the aisles. Some of the fondest memories. Amen. Sister Shore back yonder. Well, I got her crying this morning. That really made me feel good. <laughs> Amen. Mark, get it again. Oh, yeah. But, uh, man, you can't come in here. You can't come in here without thinking about them folks. And uh, Brother Shore, you my buddy. Yeah. Amen. And uh, man, those kind of people, you can't, the, the world don't produce those kind of people. Amen. Come here, pull up this morning, Brother Subers out there, shoveling the, the sidewalk, the driveway out there, 82 years old. Some of you boys, we ought to just whoop you now. Amen. We ought to just, we ought to tar and feather you. We ought to quarter and draw you. You know what quarter and draw is? That's so why we open you up with a pocket knife and take one of your intestines and draw them out of you. <laughs> Amen. Ah, there. Ah. Out there doing all that. Some of these guys work around here and some of you boys, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, I'm telling you, you're so lazy if a fly lands on you, you just watch him. <laughs> Won't even swat at a fly. No. Ain't, no, ain't even no reason to ask whether you made your bed this morning. <laughs> Some of you didn't even brush your teeth, you lazy dog. Comb your hair. <laughs> Where do we get all that? See how we get that? Why can't we all just get along, man? The people of God. Amen. And these men around here and these ladies. You can learn. You can learn how to. You can learn how to have something in life. There's no other place to get that, folks. Thank God for the church. We got an old fellow in our church. His name is well. I, I don't know what his first name is. I always call him Judge Solly. He's a retired judge, and he's he's 89 years old. Spry old fellow. And I told him one day. I, I Brother Hood came to our church, and I took Brother Hood over there. I said, I've got to introduce you. He goes, who is it, man? You know how Brother Hood is. I said, this guy's a retired judge. He goes, what? <laughs> Amen. I mean, in our past life, we'd never want to be around a judge. I told Judge Solly, I said, Judge Solly, I said, it's only God, the Holy Ghost, that can make me love you. <laughs> he looked at me and he goes, I understand that, son. <laughs> I remember going before Judge Skurlock, the hanging judge. And I remember his glasses, how he looked at me. He said, did you strut then? No, I walked in like this. <laughs> Amen, he had the power in his hand. Yeah. Yeah. And Brother Bob, you know how they always do when they get down to where they're going to put yeah. you in jail? Yeah. They yeah. always give you what they could do, the maximum. Yeah. He said, son, do you know I could put you in prison for five years this morning? <laughs> Sir, <laughs> Amen. He didn't thank God. But I did get a little jail time out of it. But you know, having those folks in our church, and like I said the other night, I know where everybody sits. God's done something in my life. You know what He's done through the local church. It is the greatest place there is. God's people are the best. Amen. Amen. And I know this around the holidays here, Christmas and all that. What a great time to be a member of the church. Amen. Amen. I don't know if y'all have a little Christmas deal where you bring food in and all that, but God's people are the best. Last night, we didn't get together and had some food. And that's one thing about Baptists. Every time we get together, we eat. Yeah. Amen. And, uh, man, loving God's people and all that, it's, a, it's the best there is. Yeah. It's the greatest place there is. Amen. So why wouldn't you want to be faithful? Why wouldn't you want to be here? Amen. Why, why, what would make it to where you know, you know, like the people sitting in here? Do you know anything about them? Amen. You ever been over their house? You ever asked them to go out and eat lunch? Amen. You ever hunt with them? Go fishing? If it's just a place, folks, that we just 